Are you considering a cruise with your kids and are wondering if cruises are actually kid friendly? Well, if this is you, the following video will be answering all your questions. If you want to get all that information, make sure you watch to the end. But first. Falling leaves, autumn breeze reminds me of when I was 17. We would walk by the frozen creek, exchanging books and more secret things. So first of all, what we're going to talk about is how uh, some of the things you might want to keep in mind when you're cruising with your children. So the first thing is what your kid likes to do. It seems pretty simple, but it's something that you should, uh, you should definitely consider when you're deciding what cruise to go on. So Vicki, what I want you to do is just to discuss from your point of view, how we decide on a cruise as a family. And then I'll just, I'll come and it kind of gives the adults. Something. Okay. Well, first off, um, they put a deposit down first, so we don't know. But when they do decide to actually tell us, maybe like a week or two later, um, the first thing we discuss are the excursions. Actually, if you want to get off at port and do any excursions, typically it was a no because we've always gone in like a non ideal time. So the weather wasn't yeah. great to really be doing a whole lot of excursions. except when we went to Catalina, it was just. I think they, I don't remember if they were having trouble with the boats that time, or if like we were having trouble with the people. It was the people. Yeah. Okay. So when we went to Catalina, that's all. Uh, did we even just? Oh yeah, we did. We did do a video on that, and I'm going to go ahead and link the video up here or mm. up there. I can't remember which. Yeah, cover me. <laughs> no, but I'll link that video if you haven't done it. Um, have you haven't seen it on what happened with Catalina? But we did not get a chance to get on the tender. Because it was probably at breakfast, remember? Oh, yeah, that was a breakfast. It's a breakfast situation. So, um, but yeah, so I'm going to fill in a little bit. So behind the scenes, before we put the deposit down, we would have spent about a month kind of throwing information at our kids very slyly. Because when she hears, you see her? When that she, was her sly. When she hears crews, it's all a cracker, right? That was a sly. It was sly. No, it wasn't. <laughs> what you told me was before i think the clue i got when i knew you were going to put a deposit down was have you got have we ever taken you to catalina island no okay then do you want to go yep and then i said yeah because i knew it was going to be a cruise okay but it's a couple of things before they are. Mm -hmm. i mean i want to go to cruise i feel like i want to go on a cruise <laughs> and dad said mm, i think i want to go on a cruise too let's see what we can find and then I'll be on there looking only when they're at home. And of course, inevitably, one of my two children will come in and be like, um, um, what you doing? Oh, yeah, that's fun. Mom, you want to watch some cruise videos later? So now I have the interest peak. So from that point on, basically, we decide um, where we want to go and what we want to do. We'll throw it out there. You guys want to go to Catalina? Um we did discuss actually for the summer. We discussed having uh, Mexico, but we do have another cruise at the end of the year with the family. Can't wait for that one. All righty, so that's one thing. And there's also a difference is that, and and the reason why I want to bring it up is because part of the planning process, the difference is between deciding if you're going to be cruising as a family or cruising with kids. Like there is a total difference. And from my point of view, the total difference, the difference is seeing how you how you plan the cruise. I've said before, kids don't have to know everything, but if you're planning a family vacation, then the family should have input, right? No, I need to have input on all cruises, actually. She don't. She may want to, but she don't. Okay. But, as a, no, but as a teenager, how would you feel if we just said, come on, well, okay, I think that that's the cruise. So come on, pack your bags. Pack your bags. Let go. She's pack your bags. We're leaving tomorrow morning from Port. Okay. So, as a teenager, how do you feel about having input on the family cruise? Personally, I feel like, I feel like it's nice because I can have like a say so, like if we go to, what was that excursion in Mexico? Not the ATV one, but the one with the, uh, the one with the one. But we could go out to Oh my Lord, no, who's my daughter? Because I, I couldn't remember it. Um, 
like if I wanted to go, if I wanted to go, I had an ability to stay if I wanted to go, rather than my parents just dragging me and exactly. making me go. Exactly, and that's part of what you need to consider when you're traveling with any child, no matter the age, is what they would want to do. Like mm, what a two year old. I don't care when you were two. We used to travel with you guys all the time back and forth, Sacramento, different places that we in Sacramento. Yeah, but you too. And when you're traveling with a two year old, it's a whole bunch of other stuff you got to deal with. Trust me. And I had two kids at the two under two, two under five. No, it was two under two under points. Yeah, it was two under two. But okay, <laughs> okay, moving up. So then, also, you need to think about the atmosphere of the ship now. We do three day cruises and four day cruises. The Mexican Riviera was going to be a seven day. My kids are older. I'm just going to put it to your point blank. My kids are older. I have two teenagers. One is about to graduate next year and go off to college. And my other one is not that far behind in age. So the atmosphere of the ship needs to be really geared towards older teens, like young adults. You know what I'm saying? Um, it has to have activities that they can do that they like. Um, whereas if you're traveling with younger kids, it you know they have to you have to have some place to put them during the day. It's not like they can be out with you all the time, and then you have to decide what you want to do at night. So, in the idea of that, tell me about some of the um, activities that you enjoyed the most while cruising uh, with your parents. Okay, I have to think about that. Um. One of them, I will say, would be like the 80s, 70s, and 90s parties because I've only ever been on Carnival. I don't know if other cruise lines do this, but they do. They do? Okay. Those are really fun. Um, there was a dance-off, and I could have gone up there, but I didn't. But you were featured on the big screen. Yeah, I was on the big screen. A lot. I was, on, I was on the big screen a lot. Mm-hmm. Her and her sister just shaking the tail feather. No, because it was one of the few dances I knew how to do. Mm-hmm. And so we didn't even have to start. I, I heard the song, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I actually knew what I was doing. And for those who don't know me, I can't dance. Mm-hmm. I, I circle. It's, it's bad. But um, so the parties were definitely fun. We had a scavenger hunt. We always have a scavenger hunt. And this is part of the teens club. Yeah, this is, this is part of the teens club. We have a scavenger hunt that um, all all children actually all children, I think, for the older children from Camp Ocean all the way to us in O2, they all have a scavenger hunt, except their books are different. So, like, the the eight ball that's near the casino is scratched out, and they don't have to look for it where we have to look for it because we can go that far into the casino. So, getting back to what we're talking about, the activities on board and the atmosphere on board. And it, and it swings both ways. You don't want it too young and too party because... With Carnival, if you're on that three-day and it's in the summer, it's a park. Don't get it twisted. Don't think it's going to be anything other than that. And since we have taken that three-day during, and it wasn't even the summer, and it was still a park. Go ahead and say how you feel. There you go. The three days are great for people who haven't cruised before, especially teenagers, because they're really fast-paced. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff to do. Maybe not as much time, but it allows you to kind of like dip your toe in the water. And get a feel for everything that the ship has to offer in that short time span. This is true. It is a lot to try to get done, but I think the focus on more three all three days is the party atmosphere. So the activities like the different quizzes and stuff like that is not something that's going to appeal to a teenager. Some of them, okay, Harry Potter appeals to everybody. That's the heart. There was a um there so I know on Carnival we did the uh, pop culture mm-hmm. trivia and we also did the Who Am I? Uh, my phone suffered a bad death after the Who Am I? But um, we did both of those. Those were really fun. It was a whole group of teenagers. It was like 15 people in the lobby and nine of us mm-hmm. from O2. Wow. So it was really fun. Now, you don't have to worry about the Love and Marriage show because it's not on the ships anymore. But you have to. I want to. If you want to know about I could, I could the Love and Marriage show, you can look at our previous video on cruising with the teenager wherever I. I, I could, you know, I could theoretically just uh, run back to the <laughs> But it's not there anymore. But what is their deal on their deal? And um, I think me and your dad did that while you guys were going to the team club. But then I did notice a lot of kids that were there. On yeah, deal, deal, on deal, deal on no deal was pretty chill. Was also, the next thing we're going to get on to is the length and type of itinerary. 
That ties into like that three day. If you're concerned about your child being around adult situations, don't take them on the break. Definitely don't take them in the summer, no matter what it is. So tell us about how you feel about the adult situation you would face on some of these cruises. Well, um, I will start by saying there's been a lot, but I feel like that comes from me not really looking my age. I've been told I look a bit older, which sucks. But honestly, I feel like I've been well prepared for them, mainly because I also take a lot of trips to Vegas. Which, I don't know, Vegas is much more concentrated than on a cruise ship. What do you mean, much more concentrated? Yeah, adult situations in Vegas, I feel like they're more common than on a cruise ship, despite the area being less concentrated, which wow. is weird. Okay, well, I yeah, we're going to explore that in another video. So be on the lookout for that one, because we do travel... We travel more to Vegas with our kids than we do on cruise ships. So, okay. okay. Back to the cruise ship. Yeah, but with adult situation on cruise ship, my parents prepared me for that. Um, Thank God for that. Secondly, they're, especially on the three-day, because I didn't come in contact with them on the four-day. Mm -hmm. But on the three-day, it was especially hard to, like, avoid that crowd. I remember I got on the elevator with my sister. And this random, we was already in the elevator. We were all going up to the uh, Lido deck, ninth deck. Well, we were on Radiance, right? Yeah. And we were all going up to the ninth deck, and uh, the guy decided to just start hitting on my sister. I told you about that. The Hispanic guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Hispanic guy. So yeah. what happened was, thankfully, somebody was getting off just the floor up, and so we walked out. <laughs> right. And so that is, that's something we did uh, prepare them for, because as you can see, my daughter does not look like she's a teenager. Um, oh, do I look? I don't know. Like, I know your age, so I'm going to say the age y'all are because I gave birth to you. But moving okay. on. Okay. Let's, take the, let's check the birth certificate. Oh, Mari hasn't told me yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what next thing we're going to talk about is excursion. And we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier. And when it came to planning, and when it comes to planning any cruise that we go on as a family, that we discuss excursions. Now, the girls like to go shopping. They want to go to Mexico and go shop. Nobody wants to go to Mexico and go eat. <laughs> See? So, it's like... It, the excursion. Oh, it's avocados. La bufadora. Okay, fine. It's avocados. Oh, shit. She wants to <laughs> avocados. Or go to the Mexican candy store. Like, that's that's what they want to do. So, um, so, yeah. You really have to take into consideration the family interest now. Um, are there, you know, do you like the idea that you get that? Well, obviously you like the idea yeah. that you get to, to speak your mind about excursion. So now moving on to our fifth topic here, which is setting ground rules. Now, before the girls first cruise, we watched a ton, a ton of videos about cruise ships. But what we also did is we set very, very serious ground rules and let them understand this is something people don't think about on a cruise ship is that you're still on a, in a city. It's a city, it's on water, and you can't get away. So what are some of the ground rules that we set for you guys for your first cruise? All right, so generally speaking, our first one usually is about our charging capabilities to our cars, um, which we're given that amount pretty early on, so we can you know, plan for what we want. Another one is the places we can't go, though we're not we're not explicitly told where we can't go. It's more like where can't you go at this time? Like they'll tell you if something eighteen plus in the app, mm -hmm. and you know on everything you are not eighteen plus. Right. So why should I ever see you there? That, that part right that there. Part. I walk into the eighteen plus comedy, and one of my kids is there. The they fact that it's not both of us is already a, it's already a breach of contract. Like these two are joined at the hip. The only time it one was only it. without the there was only one time. <laughs> there was only one time. You're right. No, not for the love of marriage show. There was another time. We told you about that. Because we had what happened was there's this up at Club Two for people who had asthma and people who didn't. Oh, you're required to go up the stairs. So that was the only time you and my sister went. But that's the activity, but you're still part of Club 02. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But when they're not in Club 02, when they're not at a team club, you see one, you be, I see one, I better see the other. I better see the other. The only exception is one of us waiting outside to make the other one the to come out. Like, and even then, that's a no no. Yeah, you know it's a no no. And let me explain to y'all the reason why. I don't know if some of y'all are old enough to remember. 
but a long, long time ago, there was a gentleman who had his daughter with him in Las Vegas. And his daughter was killed in the restroom in Las Vegas while he was waiting on his child to come out that bathroom. Mm -hmm. And obviously, unbeknownst to this man, that there was a, a whole grown man waiting in this stall and killed this child. So we've always had that rule that you need to be with your sister in the bathroom, not on the outside. On the east side, like I don't mean in the stall with her. No, I mean like for the single ones. Oh, for the, the single, single ones, yeah. Right. <laughs> the single ones, yeah. But if it's multiple stalls, you have your behind and in with your sisters. That's some of the. And then curfew. Oh yeah, and then we have a curfew, which by carnival policy, I think it's one. Yeah, by our policy, is twelve thirty. Unless there is an activity with Club O Two that takes you overtime, mm -hmm. which honestly there was every night. If it was up to Club O2, we would not be getting back until 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't going to stay up that late. Right. And there are there are not very many areas that are off limits, but we do stress very, very heavily that the adult serenity area do not enter. If you can avoid it, because of the way the ship is laid out, you have the, the kids area and then the door to serenity is literally right there so we, and then there's another one that wraps around on the other side so we make sure that they understand that that door is never to be used by you you know unless because it is a fire escape unless it's, it's a the, fire escape. unless it's in a fire escape emergency that's one thing but if it ain't no emergency don't take yourself to serenity because i don't know there's been a couple of situations on the serenity deck that uh mm, okay so moving on to the next one now one of the things that we do use is uh we use a chat yeah use a chat picture a lot um on the carnival it's a godsend because even though there's a lag i can keep up with my kids the lag is the lag is pretty sometimes you'd have I remember one time but the day after okay so the first time we went on the crew um we were getting we were getting back out of like there was like a bonding activity Going on in 02, really late at night. So we texted our mom and told her that there was an activity because we already set the ground rules. So she knew if there was an activity, we had to text her. So there was an activity, but the message didn't go through. And since I did a screenshot, I had no proof that I actually sent it. So I did actually get in trouble for that one. Mm -hmm. So then after that, I had to screenshot every single time I sent a message. Just to make your mom, 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 mom. Now I did tell you it's not my fault your phone didn't take it. Right. But mom, I told you. Okay, well, I can deal with that, but at least I know where they were last. Um, because you can't always, you can't always depend on the, on the cameras, on the ships to, to check where your child is. There are security by. cameras. There are blank spots. There are things that can happen. Uh, we did have dinner every night. That was our one requirement. We had dinner together every night. That Except was the one requirement. Except what? No, oh, no, we started together. My bad. We had the really bad dinner. We started together, but we ended up. Split. Split. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we went to two different places. Obviously. I think you guys we went down this we went both we both went to Lido. I think y'all went to uh the deli. And we, we went to the deli, yeah, because I wanted me to get uh, my favorite okay. But um okay, so uh now that we've talked about all that kind of basic stuff, is there anything else you want to say about going on the cruise? Like if you were a from a teenager's point of view. Is it fun? Is it something that you like it's, to do? It's definitely very fun. Mm -hmm. I like. You hear why? I'm sorry. I get nothing but buffet food. I get restaurant dinners for three days or however long I stay there. Um, I get ice cream. Ice cream really is the ice cream. <laughs> I get I, unlimited ice cream mm -hmm. until midnight. Mm -hmm. Um, that the burger actually kind of fire. Yeah. And you meet you meet a lot of new people and a lot of fun people. Now on that, at the teen club, I know you've been on a few cruises. So, are you still in contact with any of the people you met on those cruises? Not from the first cruise, but I am from the second cruise. Um, who from the second cruise? The uh, the people from the second cruise. I don't talk to as often as I did when I you know first got off the ship. We do check in every now and then. I remember one time I we got in the pool. Me and the other teenagers from O2. We got in the jacuzzi right there because we were having fun and we said, forget it, we might as well. Um, we, that was the time we didn't tell our parents we were coming back to the room. Mm -hmm. We didn't tell them, we didn't knock before. And when we got no answer, we walked in. But um, we went there and we get into the jacuzzi and we're having fun. 
And then my phone go off. <laughs> and I look at the chat and all it said was, look up. What? <laughs> I look up and they're right there with their drinks and I'm like, can y'all leave us alone? Y'all have happened to be there. Y'all have a whole serenity you can go to. Yeah, no. <laughs> serenity was quite boisterous. I don't like serenity on a three day. For the same reason, like, it's like a lot of drunks. But anyway, it, 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 I, I'm gonna say that. I'm like, it is I'm one of the drunks. I'm just gonna say loud. Okay. It was one in the afternoon, but I'm like, no, it's a cruise ship. Drinking culture just evaporates on a cruise ship. You know what we haven't talked about? Sea days. Now, that is where you have a problem. The more sea days you have on the cruise, the more likely you're going to have a 14. Oh, yeah. Tip for um teenagers. Whatever music app you use, Spotify, Apple, uh, Pandora, even if you're that old, for the love of... I don't even listen to Pandora. Yeah, I know. Oh. Um, Mm -hmm. but everything download your playlist mm -hmm. before leaving because mm -hmm. there's times I know in, um, in our radiance we have a jukebox in there where we can choose songs to play and sometimes they turn the jukebox the off club. yeah the team club mm -hmm. they, sometimes she would turn the jukebox off because maybe we're doing something that she's trying to encourage getting to know people no. just make sure you download your playlist with all your favorite songs because you're going to need them especially because they don't allow explicit music in O2, and let's let's be for real here. I haven't heard of a single teenager who hasn't listened to at least fifteen explicit songs in the last thirty minutes. It is one tip. tip. It is any more tips? That was a good one. I never, I, I didn't even know that until just now. And what happened with that? Really? I downloaded it for a trip to uh, Victorville, mm -hmm. and then I realized that if it was downloaded, I didn't need Wi-Fi to access it, so mm -hmm. I could be on the cruise and access without using up the data mm -hmm. or needing Wi-Fi. Another weird tip is uh, to collect the Instagrams or Discord or WhatsApp, whatever you use, Telegram even, of the people you meet. Mm. Of the people you meet because not all of them live in the U.S. Mm. And sometimes they travel out from Europe and you don't want to incur charges trying to text these people. Mm. So it's much safer to use one of those apps. But I think on the first one, there was a guy who came in from the U.K., mm -hmm. So we could text him, but we can communicate on Discord. Okay, that's great. That's a great tip. Also, uh, what about the food? The food in the um, main dining room. Honestly, I think it's gotten better since what's his name? Emerald. I was about to say Emilito. Emerald Gassi. Since Emerald took over, I guess I don't know what the position is. Head chef, I guess. Of the fleet. Of the, yeah, of the entire of, of the fleet. Back up. <laughs> No, I'll stay back, stay back, stay back, stay back. I'm a vampire. I need some stuff. Go ahead. Yes, that's what I've been telling you. Okay. Uh, and, um, okay, since he took over, uh, I feel like the food has gotten a lot better. Mm -hmm. Definitely more flavorful. There's not much variety, though. Mm -hmm. There's not as much variety as there used to be. I remember when I... I remember when I went on a cruise the first time with Carnival. Mm -hmm. We had, like, seven or eight options. No, no, like, ten or twelve. Ooh, a ton of we had a ton. Because uh, they gave us three vegetarian. We got the Indian one. Are you talking about the, like the entrees? Yeah. I, 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 I venture to say that it's the same number of options. Okay, let me Well, the tricky thing, and this is what all the cruise, cruise ships are doing, they're using the same food as being either a, it can be ordered at or an entree. I think that's where the difference is uh, because you have foods that were just like total apps and then these are just entrees and now they're kind of mixing it where you can order like you can order what was that the uh, clam chowder the clam chowder. Not, the, not the clam chowder corn chowder the, the corn, corn chowder, chowder right as an entree or app you see what i'm saying and the strawberry soup yes yeah, so i feel like that's what i meant by variety um mm -hmm. it's not the same foods it's not the same eight like oh my god when i went on a cruise the first time mm -hmm. it was like a set, maybe five to seven yeah. food for appetizers, and then another eight to nine, depending on what we had. If it was formal night, it was eight, but if yeah. not, it was nine for our entrees. But now it's just the same eight foods. So, um, no, but do you have anything else about food and the teens? Other than the food and the music, I would say bring wireless earbuds because you can meet them. You can't bring speakers. So, so for you as a team, about to go on another cruise, another cruise with your parents. Um, yeah, how do you feel about 
<laughs> Good. I want five stars. Will do. Will recommend. Is that what you do? Yeah. Because, because if I could, I would go on a cruise once a month. <laughs> All right. That's it for this video. I mean, but that is it for this video, everybody. As she stated, so. If you have gotten any good information, anything usable, anything that you're like, oh, it's an aha moment, put aha in the comments.